authentication protocols. So. Hello. Uh, yeah. So thank you. I'm uh, Tianhao Wang. So this is work done with uh, my colleagues uh, uh, Huang Yige, Omar Chothari, uh, Hamad Maji, and my prof uh, my advisor, Professor Ning Hui Li. Uh, so this this work is about uh, the security and the usability of uh, segment-based uh, visual cri uh, visual crypto authentication protocols. Uh, so the uh, uh, the motivation for this kind of uh, protocol is that there is a user and uh, he wants to uh, access the, say, a bank account, but uh, there is no uh, trusted computers. Say, for example, if you are in a, a, a public library or in, in the school where there, there is no trusted computer. So once you have entered the password and uh, you, you, the, the untrusted computer may have some uh, malware in it, and uh, he can uh, steal your password. So we ask the question. Uh, so, so, so the common sense is that the passwords are uh, vulnerable to uh, uh, to malwares, right? So we ask the question: Are there uh, user authentication protocols that are, um, are robust to such attacks? So we found a so survey in, I think, uh, SMP, and uh, they point out uh, a, 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 pro a product called Pass Window. So the the idea of Pass Window is that the, it, it uses the visual crypto. So this uh, 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 animation is from uh, Wikipedia uh, uh, visual crypto. And uh, so the basic idea is that you have two images. Once you overlay them together, you can uh, you can see a secret. You can read out a secret from uh, from it. So the password window is a, is basically a, say a credit card, and uh, there is a transparent part in it, and there are some uh, segments, and uh, so so it's uh, basically uh, an image. And uh, once you got a challenge from the other side, you you just overlay the two images, and you can read out some secret. Uh, and yeah, so Pass Window is a uh, award winning startup, and uh, this seems to be uh, an alternative. And uh, But uh, uh, we, we ask the question is it uh, indeed secure? So I will uh, tell you the answer throughout my, my presentation. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, so this uh, talk is divided into, into three parts, and uh, first of all, I will uh, go over the framework of uh, what is a uh, segment-based uh, visual crypto uh, authentication protocol. So yeah, so uh, here is the same scenario. There is a user and a bank, and uh, uh, in, in the same environment where there is an untrusted computer, and the user wants to uh, send that, uh, to request uh, the, some, uh, something, and uh, send that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a user. And the, the bank replies with some challenge, and uh, the user and the bank share a secret. Uh, share a secret, right? And uh, the user applies the the secret to the challenge, and uh, got some answer, and they reply the answer to the to the bank. And the bank uh, can uh, determine whether to accept uh, to to accept or deny this uh, request. So here, the top secret re refers to the uh, product uh, of, uh, of pa uh, if we apply the product of Passwindow here, the, the top secret is actually this uh, uh, credit card, right? And the challenge is uh, maybe one image or uh, several images. And the interaction between the top secret and the, the challenge is basically the uh, if you have a credit card and there is images on the screen of the monitor, you can you you can just uh, superimpose your credit card and uh, read out some uh, secret from the uh, from the screen. Right? So uh, so here in the in, in the environment of uh, password product, there, uh, they use a kind of animation loop around the thing. So that means the the challenge is basically here like. Uh, six frames, and uh, the six frames is uh, displayed uh, uh, all over around. And uh, 
Here P uh, warns the user that uh, consecutive uh, uh, digits are, are coming. And uh, so the, the user, once he overlays his key into the, the challenge, he can read out. The, so here this frame is nothing, nothing. So here P, I mean, uh, so, so I'm, uh, uh, I'm prepared to read out uh, upcoming digits. Oops. And, uh, and now I, I can read out 859. So the, this is my passcode to, to, uh, to the bank. So here we also assume the, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, computer is now trusted. There might be malware in it. And uh, so, yeah, so we want to ask the question, what is the success probability the adversary have to impersonate the victim after uh, having observed uh, some uh, specific sessions? Oh, uh, oh, by the way, the, the adversary uh, can observe the, the challenges, whether uh, the, uh, the, the, the passcode and whether this uh, authentication is uh, approved or denied. Okay, so uh, then let's move on to the, to the second uh, part of this talk. Uh, we will present uh, our first attack. So the key insight here is, is how to represent uh, the possible keys. So if the, see here, the, the key has eight positions, and each position have, uh, has seven segments, and uh, two, two consecutive, uh, uh, two adjacent uh, seg uh, uh, positions have uh, two, two edges uh, that is shared. So there is a, a, a total amount of uh, 42 segments. Then we can, uh, we can maintain a, a bit vector of, uh, of length 2 to the power of uh, uh, 42. And then we just uh, uh, go through the transcript and uh, eliminate uh, uh, the keys that is impossible. Uh, so yeah, by the, the uh, obvious shortcoming of this uh, uh, representation is that it does not scale with the, the key lengths uh, because the, the B vector is too long. Now, uh, and alternatively, we can turn the B vector for each position. Uh, so the, the first position have a 128 B vector, right, because there are uh, seven segments. And the second uh, position also have uh, uh, 128 uh, B vectors. And there, there are eight, eight, uh, eight positions, so there are eight rows. And the advantage of it is that um, this representation scales with the key length. But the shortcoming is that uh, uh, it loses information across uh, positions. So, uh, for example, if uh, the first uh, position take this uh, pattern, the second position cannot uh, take another pattern. So this representation does not uh, uh, contain the information uh, like that. So actually, there are a, a third. Uh, so. Uh, 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 there, there are uh, the uh, third alternative is to 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 uh, represent each segment separately. So uh, that have the lowest uh, overhead, but uh, it misses too much correlation. So as a result, we adopt uh, the second kind of approach. But uh, um, yeah, so the shortcoming of it is that it uh, loses some correlation, and we will. Uh, uh, present how to how to deal with that later. Another key insight is that uh, if we observe the challenge and the response, we can uh, have some uh, uh, information that uh, no other digits can be encoded in this uh, in this challenge, 
and uh, at maximum, uh, one digit can be encoded in each frame, and digits must be encoded in consecutive frames in the uh, environment of pass window, right? So uh, we can remove all the keys that uh, uh, does not uh, uh, satisfy those constraints. So the detailed uh, uh, attack algorithm is uh, uh, we, we, we represent uh, the key as we just uh, mentioned. And we do the key reduction. Uh, so here, if we observe the, the, the challenge and the response, we, we know that the first position must not be a digit other than eight once, it, once we overlay the, the key with, it, with this challenge. And uh, the third the technique is, uh, so, uh, it, it is to capture the correlation between the positions. So we try all possibilities and uh, eliminate uh, uh, impossible case. So th uh, the basic idea we, is we try all uh, possibilities and uh, uh, extend a, a tree. And uh, each, tree, uh, each node represents some uh, more constraint, and uh, at last we merge the rest of the keys in the, in the, in the leaf nodes. Oh, by the way, these are the invalid patterns. In, so in the uh, environment of pass window, those are not valid. So here we, sh we, we show some experimental results. So this is a graph called the uh, uh, mean entropy graph. So the x-axis is uh, how many sessions we have observed. And the y-axis uh, represents uh, the uh, log of a, su a successful probability inverse. Uh, so the, the, the lower the curve, uh, the, the better the attack, and uh, the, the worse the scheme. Right? So uh, here is a point uh, zero, uh, 3.2. That means uh, uh, we, we haven't uh, observed any, any session. And we, we have an entropy of uh, 3.2. That means we can succeed uh, with uh, approximately 10% uh, without uh, observing any transcript. Uh, so yeah, that means. Uh, the key is uh, uh, it's not uh, useful, some, uh, something, or, or if we can uh, tolerate this, uh, we, we can use it for, for once or sometime. And this 3.6 uh, means uh, we can uh, succeed with uh, probability 66% after observing uh, three sessions. Yeah, so that means uh, the uh, the attacker can impersonate uh, with probability more than 6%. So we also uh, 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 reach out to, to try to ex uh, explore more variants of this, uh, this product. We, we, we first try to uh, use uh, different uh, generation algorithms, and we also try to uh, see the, the influence of uh, noisy frames uh, whether included or not, and we thirdly we 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 can separate the the columns and see its uh, effect in terms of uh, uh, security. And the result shows uh, uh, so yeah. So this is pass window, and uh, this is uh, we 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 eliminate the noisy frame. So that uh, basically every frame uh, encode one digit. And this random pattern means uh, we, we change the, the K generation and the challenge generation algorithm to, to what we think is optimal. Uh, so yeah, here, uh, pass window is, uh, is like this. And uh, if we set a bar here, uh, a, a bar of uh, Y equals uh, four means that we, need, uh, we want to uh, we want the adversary have a succeed probability uh, less than a threshold. So if we set a bar y equals four here, we can use uh, the two uh, like uh, one times and uh, five times. So yeah, the, these are the first attack, and now we come to the the 
the more advanced but the more complicated attack. It's called li linear programming based attack. So this is the, the previous attack we have. So what we observe is that uh, this uh, key reduction step is the essential step to remove the possible keys. And because this is, uh, there is a, uh, the, each, the first part must not uh, be a digit other than it. This is uh, what we call deterministic information and it is essential to, to remove keys. So, so the question is, can we avoid that? Yeah, so, so uh, then, then we come to the alternative. We borrow the help from the human side. When uh, we, we, we uh, ask the humans to, to do some uh, computation. So the fir first alternative is called uh, uh, EDD, uh, either of double digits. So, so the basic idea is that uh, here, the superimposed uh, image can have uh, two, two digits, so three and seven. So after this uh, uh, image, the, uh, the, the, the human can reply with either three or seven. Yeah, so, so, so here, there is no more deterministic information because uh, we uh, suppose we know the uh, response is uh, three. We do not know whether seven is also encoded or uh, four is also encoded, that, that's, that is unknown, right? And the second uh, uh, alternative we call HDD uh, hashing of uh, uh, double digits, so uh, the, the same image, but the, uh, the response is the modular turn of the two digits, so it's basically zero. So, here, we, if we know the response uh, is a seven, we know uh, two plus five is uh, possible, three plus four is also possible, but we do not know uh, exactly which uh, digit is uh, encoded in this, uh, in this frame. So there, there, there is a minimum uh, uh, deterministic information. And the third one is uh, more complicated, but the same idea, we, we do modular time of uh, three digits. So if we pass the three digits, uh, it gives us a seven, but uh, we do not know which, uh, which uh, digit is encoded. Uh, so can we uh, attack this? Uh, there is no deterministic information here, right? Uh, but we can use uh, what we call satisfaction-based attack, uh, also linear program-based attack. That is, we, we first encode the problem as a satisfaction problem. So we still encode each position as a bit vector or uh, 128 uh, uh, variables and write uh, some constraints. So for example, uh, one constraint is that uh, one of the 128 variables uh, must be one and others must be zero, right? That, that means uh, uh, only one pattern is, uh, is true in this position. So each position can only take one, one pattern. Another constraint is, for, for example, for uh, uh, HDD, if uh, D1 plus D2 is a response, we, uh, the, the patterns that produce D1, D2 are one, others are zero, right? And there are more constraints if we observe more transcript. So how to solve those constraints? We first, we first try the, uh, 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 the solvers. But it's uh, basically, it, it is a, a difficult question and it takes a long time to, 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 come, to a result, uh, come to a result. Then we relax the problem as a, a linear programming problem or a optimization problem. We use some uh, tools and uh, we use rational numbers instead of uh, zero or one uh, instead of uh, integers right, to, to, to speed up uh, the problem. But it still takes a long time. So, so then we come to uh, the idea is, uh, to, to relax the problem using multiplicative update. So the basic idea is that uh, still we have a, a bit vector and uh, 
we uh, use rational numbers, right? So as long as it adds up to one, it's fine. And uh, so intuitively, each number represent is a possibility. So, so here, uh, the, this view vector means uh, the possibility uh, of uh, this position take uh, this, uh, uh, this pattern is a half possibility. The second uh, pattern is also half, others are zero. Right, so we start from a uniform distribution like like, like this. Then in, instead of uh, forcing all constraints to hold, we just uh, uh, go over all the constraints uh, one step or another. And uh, so here, for for example, there is a constraint uh, as up to one. So we start with the uniform. So this this constraint is uh, is already satisfied. So if we have another constraint uh, that uh, all, uh, all on means uh, uh, this, uh, this pattern or uh, all off means this pattern cannot happen. So that means uh, these two, uh, two patterns must be zero. Right? So, so we uh, make them two zeros. And we do a loop until converge. So the, the, the convergence gives us uh, the all, all are uh, 1 over 126, other, uh, only the two are zeros, right? So we, uh, we use this uh, attack to, uh, to attack uh, what we call, uh, what have, uh, I have uh, pre uh, pre previously presented, the HDD, DD, and HTD schemes. And we also use this to attack uh, the most secure uh, scheme uh, to the, for, for the previous attack. And we also use this uh, mean entropy uh, uh, figure. And if we also set a bar here where y equals to four, we can see that HDD can be used uh, for uh, eight times. And if we set lower the bar, we, we can use it uh, for 12 times, right? And this shows that uh, uh, the random pattern can, can be uh, uh, effectively break up by this uh, new attack. And uh, here, uh, uh, the EDD scheme is uh, even worse, which is uh, counterintuitive uh, at first, but, uh, but, but the, the idea is that uh, if we use EDD, the attacker will succeed with either the either of the, the digits, right? So that means the, the, the entropy in the, in the response is less. Okay, so in this, uh, uh, in this talk, I give uh, three, uh, uh, I divide it into three parts, and first I give the framework for authentication protocol, and then I show two, two uh, attacks uh, so the current uh, result is that uh, uh, no schemes can be used. And uh, there are some, uh, always some uh, possibility to find the new uh, schemes. Uh, so with that, I would like to conclude and uh, thank you and I would like to take questions. Can you elaborate a bit on the very beginning uh, how the segments are generated uh, on, the, on, the, on the card? Are they fully static or are they dynamic? Uh, you mean the key or challenge? The, 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 the one that is used by the user to be put in front of the screen, right? Yeah. The one that are on the card, how, where do they come from? Oh, so the, the user should uh, agree with the, the server the, the, the two agree with the, with the key and the... Uh, right, but that key is, is, once they have agreed, they're going to make use of that key over multiple sessions. Oh, so it, it's static. It's static? Yeah. Okay, so, right, but that's of course a, a problem and, and that explains why you have this curve that systematically go down. Mm -hmm. uh, there exist nowadays techniques that make it possible for smart cars to have dynamic yeah. uh, displays, yeah. right, in which case, you could renew that thing 
for each and every authentication session. Okay. Right? So, have you, because this would be the solution, right? So, have you looked into this? Uh, no. But, but if you use the. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, 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 you mean the, the dynamic setting? Yeah. So, if you use that, it would be like a one, pass, uh, one time pad? Yeah. Which so, is the problem. Uh, so, yeah. Well. yeah. So, <laughs> if you have a computing device, you can solve back and back authentication problems, yeah. for sure. So, the idea of using Visual Crypto is you do this without the actual computing device. So, all you have is some fixed thing, and then you do the computing manually. So, this is uh, what we have, this, we, we look at this kind of problem. Of course, if you have computing device, then you can do challenge response and you'll be secure and the yeah. crypto buffer is secure for sure. Yeah, but this is going to be, I mean, it's already used, it's already in operation nowadays and it's going to be mainstream, I mean, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, now, yeah. so, so we're, we're yeah. not saying second factor authentication cannot be done securely. Right. So we're looking at whether you can do second factor authentication without actual, without actual computing device and using human computing capability. But why would you rely on humans, which we know how unreliable they are, to do this, so I missed the initial motivation of the work. So the initial motivation, so human authentication still rely on human, right? So human remember password, that's the primary authentication. Yeah, but we know, yeah, but so sometimes you want to enhance that with the actual computing device, with the smartphone, sure, you can solve a problem with that. But sometimes you want, if you want to solve a problem without relying on an actual computing device, then virtual crypto is the one way to go. Okay, but not, but not for banking, I guess. Because the example was banking, but I, I, I doubt banking. So the company there. tried to market this product to banking, but they failed. So not because, not because uh, uh, it's broken, but not, not because it's insecure, but <coughs> because, I guess, uh, there are lots of other usability issues. Like uh, when you print this on the card, when you show it on the screen, the screen size may be different. You have to somehow line up and perfectly exactly. to make it work. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But we're just interested in the algorithmic issue. Can we design a virtual crypto that doesn't rely on any actual computing device, it's just human doing computation and create a secure authentication. I understand. Thanks. So your original visual crypto example from Wikipedia had a lot more bits than the ones that uh, the cards were using. Could such a scheme actually be viable with a lot more bits? Uh, uh, yeah, that, that could be viable, but uh, that also incurs uh, uh, more uh, uh, re usability so because uh, when, uh, again once you overlay your card with the screen you need to align the, the pixels uh, perfectly so yeah so, so you can but uh, that uh, may not be usable. Any other questions? Just a quick thing I mean yeah, uh, sure. in terms of the countermeasures so for example did you try uh, I mean as you said it's a user uh, it's not going to be user friendly, but for example, increasing the size of these digits, is it the going to, for example, <coughs> reduce the success of the attack that you presented? Uh, so, so you mean to enlar uh, enlarge, the enlarge the key? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that uh, can uh, make it more secure, but uh, mm -hmm. still, uh, if you enlarge the key, it is less usable, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, also, it can be uh, breaking in, in, in several sessions, so yeah. nice. And, and in real life uh, application level, of your knowledge, is there any other examples of these types of schemes rather than using a seven segment display? Uh, no. No. Okay. Um, so you said that uh, the combinatorial optimization problem, just trying to solve the satisfaction problem, was too expensive. Yeah. Um, what people have done besides going to linear programming and relaxing to fractionals is to use um, suboptimal. So basically, you use like a uh, like a heuristic, a greedy heuristic to solve these optimization problems, and these greedy heuristics are fantastically effective. Uh, uh, so I wonder if you tried any of those and see if those would, you know, crack the system with high probability you know, faster. Uh, so yeah, so 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 we tried uh, several tools, uh, the uh, mini mini set and the Z3. Yes, but th those are mini set, and all those those are you know combinatorial optimization. They do branch and bound and do all kinds of things, but they're actually trying to solve the real problem to find the real optimum. Okay. Because if you go to like a greedy heuristic, it will take a fraction of the time. Uh, it will work a lot of the, for a lot of instances. 
But yeah, so, so again, if we enlarge the, the key, it uh, also becomes uh, uh, still hard. Try the other. So in some sense, what we are doing is we design a greedy algorithm specific for our <coughs> problem, it, and it works very well. And uh, yeah, you need to find, but maybe if there are existing tool we try, maybe it will also work. But yeah, so I'd be happy to talk to you to get the pointer to those. Okay, so let's thank the speaker again.